Welcome to One on One with Steve Adubato, One on Two today. And we are pleased to welcome Patty DeSanto and Mike Struziak, who are co-managers of something called Team Liberty. This is part of New Jersey Sharing Network, which is, which is an organization we've done a lot of work with, an organ and tissue donation. What is Team Liberty, and what does it have to do with a, a big event coming up in 2020? Look at that setup. Go ahead. What do you got? Well, Team Liberty is a group of people get together composed of recipients, donors, advocates, plain volunteers that are actually promoting transplantation and the need for more donors to be on the list so we could save more and more lives. So we're making people aware and we're actually teaching them what transplantation is about and what happens and what's the great benefits of it. And as you know, Steve, the games are coming here in 2020. Look, check out Transplant, Transplant Games. We'll show the website for the Sharing Network. You check it out. That's a big, that's a national event, no? Yes. Every state in the United States will be here. Even Hawaii and even Australia will be here. Tell and folks your connection. I'm sorry. Tell uh, folks why you're directly involved. Twelve years ago on September 12th, I just uh, celebrated my 12th anniversary. I had a pancreas kidney transplant. Uh, it was a great gift given to me by Kristen Teresa O'Hara. Uh, she died in a car accident 12 years ago, and that's why I'm involved. Every day is a gift from her, and I'm trying to give back to help save other lives. As it's often referred to, the gift of life. The gift of life. You have a powerful story as well. I do. My son Joe received a heart transplant 13 years ago when he was 12. He's now 25. He's doing great. He experienced a uh, graduation from high school, graduation from college. Um, he, now he works. He's out in the world off the payroll, and he's living every day because you he got a second. You meant off the payroll, meaning off, off of your... The family <laughs> payroll. Um, yeah. But he's living every day because somebody saved his life. You know, for those of you who know what we do, you know that there's a series of programs. Actually, as we do this program, we just aired a back-to-back um, -back special from a race that you guys have every year. Check out our website. It'll, it'll come up if you want to see that. But what always strikes me, and I, I recently did a seminar for you and your colleagues on storytelling, on the importance of storytelling and communicating, right? How comfortable are most of the recipients and some donors? And I've often talked about my wife as a kidney donor. How comfortable are most people talking about their personal experience? You know, it's, it's tough. Not everybody is really comfortable, but it makes such an impact. And I think that the more people do it, the more comfortable they get. And a lot of it is based on the response that they get from people that they're sharing their stories with. It really is powerful being able to get people to understand. Most people aren't really that aware of it right. because it didn't touch their lives. But once you share a story and you make it, you know, coming down to that personal level, I think people really get it. And what's interesting is we've often said this, the stats are there are 4,000 people plus waiting right now just in the state of New Jersey, tens of thousands, maybe more hundreds of thousands in the country waiting for a transplant. For you, the question I'm curious about, Mike, is for you to start telling your story and sharing it with others, was it natural for you? It was kind of natural because the, the, it all started maybe five days when I was in intensive care. And they took the tubes out and everything else. And I said to myself, I don't know who this young girl is, but I had to tell the world. You gave which, me the gift of life. You gave me the gift of life, exactly, who this young girl was. And I have to find out and tell her story with my story and help others. And it became very natural to me to go out and talk. So it was good. I, when you, did you meet her family? Yes, I did. I met her family actually uh, six months after the transplant, which was unheard of. Describe it, the meeting. The meeting was here in Edison, New Jersey. I was in touch with them, and they were having... Uh, a little get together. The family was from Florida that lived up here, and they came to visit his, their, their the, Mr. and Mrs. O'Hara, his brother had a house up here still, and they invited me to come up there. And I went to the front door, and I got a little uh, Hummel um, angel with blonde hair and blue eyes, because Kristen was blonde hair and blue eyes. And I was at the front door, I rang the doorbell, and Mr. O'Hara came out. He shook my hand, gave me a hug, and the grandmother came in, and it was like, it was unbelievable. Like, they, they absorbed me right into the family. And the mother, Agnes, who came to the Rose Parade send-off that I had two years ago. Out in California. Yep. And she uh, was in the doorway of the kitchen, and she saw me, and she just ran into my arms crying. And we sat there for two, three hours talking before they made me dinner, <laughs> and they wanted to know all about me. And you wanted to know about them. And I wanted to know about them. You know, um... By the way, let's keep putting up the uh, information. 
for people if they want to learn more about organ and tissue donation. Tell folks, Patty, why it's so incredibly important that people learn about it and think about it, because it's not that difficult with your driver's license, the renewing of your driver's license to do this. Go ahead. It's not that difficult, and even it's easy to talk to your family about what your wishes are, even if you don't register, but we want more people to register because there's a shortage of organs. You don't know when you're going to be in need or one of your loved ones or one of your friends. It's not something you ever think about or plan for, but it is so important because when you're in that position, you really are depending on other people to register to be organ donors. What did it do for your son? And by um, the way, what would have happened if that hadn't happened? So it's, it's everything. It's everything. And it wasn't just my son. He received a second chance, but our whole family received a second chance. And actually, it went beyond our, our immediate family. It went to our extended family, out to our community. We had a whole community who they donated blood, and they all registered to be organ donors. We raised so much awareness from what was a tragedy for a young woman who donated her heart to my son and also donated other organs. She, excuse me. She made that decision. She made that before decision. Before that tragedy. That if, in fact, she were to pass, she wanted to give the gift of mm -hmm. life. And she made that decision, and she didn't take it lightly from the story. We did meet her mother, and she shared the story about her daughter thinking about whether she should be registering to be an organ donor, and her and her mom had a conversation about it, and it was a conversation that saved my son's life. And um, we're just so thankful, and it, it's part of our story now. 2020 Transplant Games will be in several locations, including uh, over at the Meadowlands. It matters, doesn't it? Big time. Because? Because it's going to make people aware of what's going on. The games were really started by recipients mm -hmm. showing the world how good they're doing and thanking their donors and how well I'm doing. Look, I had a pancreas kidney transplant. You would never know I was sick. It works. It saved my life. I have four daughters. I walked three of them down the aisle, and I have seven grandkids. You have seven grandkids. I have seven grandkids. Okay. That goes like the pyramid. It just keeps spreading the news that, look, look at Mike. Oh, my God, he's doing so well. And it just saved more and more and lives. And finally, um, sorry for interrupting you. You have about 250, as we do this program in the fall of 2019. The games will be in uh, 2020. Uh, how many members on your team right now? So there's probably over 300 members on our team, but it's growing every single day. They're from New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut from the tri-state area. And like Mike said, there are teams from all across the country who will be coming to New Jersey. I know for us, we've been to the games um, maybe about six or eight times. They were actually life-changing for our family because you're there with all these people mm -hmm. who are coming from all different backgrounds and different states and different points in their lives, but we all come together sharing this mission, and it was just life-changing and phenomenal, and we want everybody else to come and, and experience it. An international event, if you will, in New Jersey, the New Jersey Sharing Network leading the effort, and I assure you we will be there with our crew uh, documenting the event and sharing more stories. So, Mike and Patty, we thank you so much for, for honoring us with your presence and sending out a powerful message. Thank you. Thanks Can I say for one, having us. one last thing? Real quick. Is there any reason not to be a donor? And I ask that to everybody. There is no reason not to be a donor. Well said. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by PSE&G, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. The Northward Center, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, the New Jersey Education Association, the Russell Berry Foundation, United Airlines, and by Caldwell University. Promotional support provided by Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey and by Jaffe Communications. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.